It's the Diamond K Show. So much going on in the world. You talk about things from the perspective of how it is. DJ Diamond K, sometimes it comes off like you are almost not in support of, but you just accept the way things are and there's no chance of change. Check me out on YouTube. That's the part that I am just like, ah. On FireTV.com. Welcome back. Welcome back. Man, Don McKay in here, of course. The Don McKay Show on fire-tv.com. Election Eve. Here we are. It has been a long road getting here. It has been a long road. Uh, But the midterm election is tomorrow. So that is going to be a very... Interesting evening. Of course, we are having um, the election special 9 p.m. to 11 uh, p.m. Eastern, 9 to 11 Eastern tomorrow. I'm going to be talking about some of the big races. Of course, we can talk about Maryland's elections as well. Um, So that is going to be tomorrow. So President Biden is participating in a rally here in Maryland tonight. Former President Trump and Ron DeSantis held uh, dueling events. And um, it has been an interesting, uh, interesting election. Interesting election. Uh, Over the weekend, President Biden and former President Barack Obama campaigned together in the uh, key state, Pennsylvania. Trump also held a rally in that state. What is up? What is up? What is at stake? Control of both chambers of Congress. That is what is on the line. All 435 House seats and 35 of the 100 Senate seats up for grabs. Dozens of governorships, secretaries of states and attorneys general all on the ballot. Tomorrow is going to be very, very interesting. So we're going to be talking about House races, Senate races, all type of things. Election Eve, exciting. Now, of course, we got, I mean, there's bad things that happen. Uh, we're going to talk about um, the shooting death of a prominent activist here in Baltimore. We're going to talk about that. Uh, Tyree Colion. And this is at the hands of the police, the Baltimore police. I'm going to talk about that. Also, Kyrie Irving, uh, fallout, backlash, Kyrie Irving, the basketball player. The Nets have given him requirements that he need, uh, needs to fulfill before he can return from his suspension. Of course, uh, earlier, I guess last week, Kyrie Irving suspended uh, for at least five games. He said at least five games. So it looks like it will be a little bit more than that. So let's do this. Take a quick break, and we're going to come back and dive into this Tyree Corleone case situation. Welcome back. Welcome back. You man, Diamond K in here. The Diamond K show. So uh, it came out, sadly, video all over uh, social media. There was a knife wielding man. And uh, the police fatally shot him. Turns out that was activist and a recording artist. I knew him as a recording artist initially. That's how I met him. Uh, coming by the studios promoting his music. Uh, But he was also an activist 
created the no shoot zones. Cut out controversial figure here. He he, he definitely was passionate about what he did, what he was doing, his mission. Uh, depending on who you ask, you may get a lot of different responses. Might get a lot of different responses uh, about Tyree Coleon. Now, um, the shooting, which took place yesterday, Sunday afternoon, um, it, I myself have more questions than, in fact, there are answers. Took place in an area of Baltimore, West Baltimore, to be exact. And the videos that I've seen, of course, we have not seen the police body cam footage yet. I'm interested to see that. Uh, I'm interested to see that because from the angles that I saw, it appears that he was complying. From what I saw. It appears that he was complying, but uh, he is 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 dead, and it was in a hail of gunfire, a hail of gunfire. Those that know him, this this ending does does not. It, it seems almost like he foreshadowed this type of an ending. The activist was known for creating two hundred and fifty six. No shoot zones across the city. People who worked with him in the community. Definitely more more uh, questions than answers. So there was uh, police claiming that they were responding to a, a call of an assault. In the Lafayette and Fulton Avenue intersection. Lafayette and Fulton Avenue intersection here in Baltimore. They arrived to find Tyree, real name Tyree Moorhead, holding a woman at knife point. Okay. I understand that there's a threat and, and, and you know, you want to save the, um, the victim. So if that is your goal, and they said that he jumped on the woman, covering the woman with his body. For them to unload 13 shots, I mean, completely putting the woman that they claim to be trying to protect in harm's way by the 13 shots that they rang out, that seems a bit, that, that conduct seems a bit confusing to me. If you feel that this woman is in danger, of being stabbed, you unload your gun right where she is, she could have been shot. She could have been killed by the police, right? From the video that I saw, but like I said, I, I, I'm anxious to see the police body camera footage. And, and, and hopefully it, it's not heavily, you know, redacted, heavily edited, so we can't see everything. But there was a whole lot of commotion, uh, and I'm definitely, if if he was doing something that he was, you know, had no business doing, if he was doing what they reported, by all means, um, what are the tasers for exactly? People say that police, I, I see people online saying police are not uh, trained to uh, uh, injure, they're trained to kill. Why do they have tasers? Why do they have tasers? Let me tell you why they have tasers. Because every situation does not require lethal force. These people are not, these officers are not supposed to be some brutes, me only kill, I can only kill. No, they're supposed to be able to use reasoning to decide in some instances, lethal force is not necessary. That's why they are given a taser. Right? That's why they're given a taser. Because in some instances, they're supposed to, you know, uh, uh, apprehend a suspect without killing them. That's why they have a taser. But you're going to have people that are going to say, no, the police, oh, they're trained killing machines. Okay. Okay, I hear you. 
I hear you, uh, but that doesn't make this right. I, I don't know. I need to see more. I need to see more. So um, the uh, friends of Tyree Coleon, Tyree Moorhead, uh, broad balloons, teddy bears, type of sentimental things to the street corner to honor him. So as I said, I, I knew him from the music community. Knew him from the music community. Uh, he's come by the studio promoting his music. I've seen him out at shows, you know, of uh, you know rappers around the city and and all that. I've seen him, and um, you know, he's been a guest on several shows over the years. Now, I mean, high energy. He's he's very high energy, very animated. Very passionate, very passionate, and um, I, I, I'm sad that he went out the way that he did. I don't believe that amount of shots was needed. He was not the, the woman was not stabbed, right? She was she was not stabbed. Uh, now, uh, should they have taken him in custody? Maybe, maybe. But I, my thing is this: Why do they have tasers if they're they're only able to just pull up? And just start shooting. From what I saw, he was complying with the police. From what I, I saw. He did a lot of grassroots initiatives around the city of Baltimore. Trying to uplift the city. No man is perfect. He worked with the homeless population a lot. Um, you know, I've never, I've never witnessed him, uh, being physically abusive, but look, I know him from the music circles, so I don't know what he did in his personal life. I don't know what he did in his personal life. I do know that, uh, it is, it is sad the way this went. The shooting remains under investigation. Police said that the woman who Moorhead held at knife point did not suffer any serious injuries. Wow, all of this, the death and, and, and the and the the uh the shooting death of this man, and she wasn't even injured. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> well, maybe, maybe she could have injured, she would have been injured. Oh, oh, except for the fact that y'all unloaded 13 shots while she was right there. She could have been killed. Yes, we definitely need to see the results of this alleged investigation. Alleged investigation. I say alleged investigation because, you know, um, I, I, um, uh, Jermaine is saying that he's been watching his page for a few days. Mental health is real. Absolutely. Mental health is definitely real. I don't know whether he had some type of a breakdown or what was going on. Uh, I've seen some of, video, some of his videos as well. Some of his live videos. Uh, definitely. He's wild. He was, he was, he was a wild dude. He was, he was a wild dude. Uh, and I'm not saying that he was treating her the way th that she needed to be treated. Uh, clearly from the background chatter and some of the cell phone footage that, uh, that I've seen, uh, people were concerned and thought that he was doing too much. And when the police arrived, they seemed to be relieved. But, uh, of course, they did not expect for him to be shot down dead uh, in a in a, uh, a hail of gunfire. Uh, but you're right. Mental health is real. Mental health is, is absolutely real. We don't know what folks are going through. But just because someone is having some type of a mental crisis, that does not mean that the police, should, that, that just gives them a, a green light to assassinate citizens. That's why people talk about uh, police need some type of a, a mental health specialist or, or someone who is trained in that field, uh, because clearly uh, uh, the way some of these things are going uh, it, it is it is just not on the up and up. It is not on the up and up. So definitely want to uh, send our condolences out to Tyree Coleon. 
Tyree Moorhead, uh, whatever he was going through, whatever uh, emotional, uh, uh, you know, challenges were happening at that moment, that did not give the police the right to kill that man. The woman who they're trying to protect was not hurt. So, uh, you know what I mean? So it's just, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just I, I could see maybe if she had been hurt and then they had no choice, they got to take him out, right? But that wasn't the case. That wasn't the case. But he, he, he is gone. He is gone and, um, you know, it, it, it is, it's, it's one of those things. So an activist, controversial, he was controversial, definitely, uh, is, is gone and a, uh, a friend. Depend, I guess depending on who you are, he's he's either a friend or or uh, or a uh, an enemy, I suppose. But now he is uh, is gone, and uh, we're going to continue to see uh, the results of this uh, so called investigation. And uh, before we talk about uh, Kyrie Irving and uh, what he's going through, let's listen to. Uh, the police commissioner and the mayor of uh, Baltimore, Brandon Scott, talk about uh, this shooting death by the uh, police. This was uh, immediately following the incident. I am joined tonight by Mayor Brandon Scott, our city administrator, Mr. Chris Shorter, uh, our consent decree monitor, Ken Thompson, and my deputy commissioner of public integrity bureau, Brian Nato. This afternoon at our around 3.39, PM. Western District officers were dispatched to the intersection of Fulton and Lafayette on a call of an armed male suspect assaulting a female who was on the ground. He was armed with a knife. Upon the officer's arrival, well, I should say we have now just watched multiple video, body cam video and cell phone video, where we have seen multiple angles of this incident. What I can tell you, what we just saw was as the officers arrived, the driver of the vehicle exited the vehicle as he called for extra officers to come. And he approached the suspect, ordered the suspect to the ground, who then placed himself what appears to be on top of the female while armed with a very large knife. The officer began to discharge his firearm at the suspect who rolled over and disengaged from the female, still armed with a knife. As the officers rendered the scene safe by removing the knife, the officers then began to render medical attention to this suspect, who was transported to a local hospital by a paramedic, where he later was pronounced uh, dead from his injuries. Certainly, in all police-involved shootings, we are represented by the state's attorney's office who was on the scene. Members of the attorney general by state law are working jointly with our special investigation response team on this investigation. Our consent decree monitor was here to monitor all activity and will certainly report to the court on today's activity. And as per our departmental critical incident body cam footage release policy, which will be in effect as of this moment, it's just a matter of time per our policy that you, the citizens, will see what we just saw tonight. And so this is a police-involved shooting. It's still very early in the investigation. What we can say is that the female was not critically injured and was not stabbed by this suspect. But the suspect was pronounced, did expire and was pronounced from his injuries. And so this is an internal investigation. The officers involved uh, are at police headquarters at this time. They have not been interviewed. But what we know right now is based on all of us here having seen multiple videos of this incident. And so at this time, I will turn it over to our mayor and then we'll take a few questions. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. First and foremost, listen, no one wants to stand here and have any loss of life. Uh, but as we know, this is under investigation. I won't go into too many details. But uh, assaulting anyone with having a dangerous weapon, a knife, let alone a woman, is something that we cannot have in our city. We are thankful that further people were not injured, that young woman or any of other individuals that were around there. Thankful that none of our police officers were injured and that they acted uh, quickly 
uh, to come to the aid of this woman who was clearly in distress uh, and did it very quickly. Uh, we could be talking here tonight about a woman that has lost her life as well, but we're not because of the actions that they took quickly. And we will continue to go through and adhere to all the regulations with the investigation, uh, but we cannot have folks assaulting women in the middle of the street in daylight in Baltimore City. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Once again, this is a very fluid, still very active investigation, crime crime scene. Analysts are behind us, still processing the scene, and we're still looking for answers as to why. So what we gave you is based on what we have seen through multiple videos. And at this time, I'll take a few questions. Cassidy, we'll start here and we'll make our way around. Okay. Um, can you confirm the name of the victim? We cannot. We're not releasing any names of any victims. Uh, what I should say, the person that has expired is the perpetrator of the assault. The victim, the female, is in uh, what I would call good condition. And was the woman also shot? She was not shot. This was not a matter of a shooting. Uh, she was not shot by the police. No, she was not stabbed by the perpetrator, nor was she shot by the officer. Question? And how, sorry, how many officers fired their weapons? Um, what we saw was one, but two officers are involved. Right here. Uh, how many times was he shot? That is unknown. Uh, the medical examiner might be able to give us that information. We know the officer fired multiple times. It is unknown how many times the suspect was struck. Right here. Okay. Nothing. Tommy. Um, I just have a couple of quick questions. First of all, we did see a video on social media that circulating appears to be the incident. I know you can't answer this yet, but I have to ask you, it appears there were at least 13 shots fired. Can you comment at all on that conduct, if that is something that should be happening, 13 shots? Well, I can't comment on that because uh, what I can say is that it's under investigation. The investigation will produce a finding. And so it would be improper and inappropriate for me to comment on that. What I can tell you is that the officer was exiting his vehicle. What we saw is that he observed what he believed was a, a, a person in distress, responded to it, and began to fire his weapon. And we know that he fired multiple times. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you all. So that was the press conference that uh, police commissioner and the mayor conducted uh, immediately following this incident. Uh, as you heard, they have not even begun to interview the officers yet. They have uh, plenty of time to get their stories together before they even start to talk to them. Uh, but that's routinely how these things go. Routinely how these things go. Uh, I'm not sure how many months it's going to be before we get the police body camera footage. Uh, they're going to take time and splice and, and dice it and do all of that and, instead of them, um, uh, you know, um, instead of uh, uh, just releasing it, they're going to slice it and dice it and, and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. I edit videos, so I'm telling you, it don't take them long to, uh, you know, just upload the video and let the people see it. But I, I, we're going to see it eventually. And, uh, you know, I guess we can make our determinations from there. Let's do this. Take a quick break. And then we're going to come back with more of the program. You'll listen to the Diamond K Show on fire-tv.com. Stay tuned. Looking for food that feeds your soul? Hoodfellas Bistro and Catering is your local African-American-owned restaurant offering American cuisine. Located across from the courthouse, we offer daily jury specials to reward civic duty. Enjoy our full-service restaurant and fully stocked bar. Dine in, pick up, delivery, and catering. Our themed happy hours feature live music, handcrafted drinks, and weekly specials. Book your private event at HoodfellowsBistroCatering.com. Welcome back. Welcome back. You man, Don McKay in here, of course. The Don McKay Show weekdays on fire-tv.com of course on demand anywhere you get your podcasts also on youtube search dj diamond k also on all social media so kyrie irving has really been in uh been in the uh the digital news lately several days after calls for the brooklyn nets to suspend kyrie irving for promoting a film that was just film filled with anti-Semitic uh, tropes on his uh, social media account. The franchise went through it on Thursday. 
They suspended him. The uh, All-Star guard got a minimum of five games without pay. Five games without pay. This comes after Kyrie Irving's, um, I don't know, he made several attempts to apologize for promoting the film and uh, the book. He, I don't know. His apology, I guess his, initially he kind of doubled down and and that, of course, disappointed some. Uh, that upset many hurt people as well. Now, the team is giving requirements. They, they've laid down uh, an ultimatum almost. They have given Kyrie Irving six requirements to fulfill before he can return from his suspension. And I don't, I mean, to me, I don't see anything wrong with him doing these things. If he wants to play, this is what he's going to have to do. And it's going to have to be sincere, right? You can have different views of different things, uh, but we have to be careful not to promote hate. It's very, I mean, you know, you can feel how you feel, and uh, but you can communicate without promoting hate, right? Now, you can promote something. You can inadvertently promote something that uh, that is hurtful to a people. You can, you can inadvertently do that. Maybe he didn't know. Maybe he did know. Maybe he didn't know how it made people feel. But in order to be reinstated by the team, Kyrie Irving must fulfill the six requirements According to reports, he has to apologize. Tyree Irving has to apologize and condemn the film he promoted. He has to apologize and condemn the film that he promoted. He has to make a $500,000 donation to an anti-hate cause or causes. He has to to make those donations, so $500,000 to an anti-hate cause. He has to complete sensitivity training he has to complete anti-semitic training he has to meet with adl and jewish leaders meet with team owner and uh at that time he needs to demonstrate an understanding of the situation yes uh as far as the money kyrie irvin has the money it's, it's not that that's not a large amount of money if you are kyrie irvin apologize he's already apologized uh he did not i mean i guess he kind he kind of condemned the film so he he needs to do the things over again that he's that he's done apologizing condemning the film uh sensitivity training something that they have uh officers uh go through and um and all of that uh anti-semitic training that's something else that uh folks need to do. So I think sometimes people don't understand what their what what their words mean to other people, right? What what their words mean to other people. You may not intend something. You may say, "Look, I'm laying down the facts." And somebody else may be upset about it. And you may be saying, you know, repeating something that you've heard someone else say, right? Uh Kyrie Irving is in he's in the entertainment business. Sports is entertainment. And if he wants to continue to do business in the sports world, then, um, you know, he's going to have to play by these rules. Uh, Everybody doesn't like it. A lot of people don't like it. Maybe Kyrie Irving says, you know what, I'm not doing none of this. He might say that, right? He might say that. Uh, Pressure from communities. Not just Jewish communities. I think I think this pressure has been from a lot of different communities on this. They they jump right on this, and um, you know it is uh, it is what it is. I don't think that Kyrie Irving set out to hurt nobody. I, I don't I don't think that Kyrie Irving um, set out to hurt nobody. Kyrie Irving is is he didn't want to wear a mask. Uh, he believes that the that the the Earth is flat. 
He doesn't believe, I think, that in the moon land. It's different. Than, like, he's one of those guys that, that gets caught up in controversies and uh, conspiracy theories. So was he actually trying to set out and say, let me hurt people? I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I just think that, I mean, he's not that old. He's not that old. Um, And had he jumped on this immediately, this could have, you know, not blown out to the proportions that it is now but uh i don't know they they gave it he had time he could have got in front of this he could have got in front of this but it, it came right around the time the kanye west stuff and he he really it, it really was uh compounded by bad timing bad timing i don't think that the brooklyn nets wanted to suspend him now, Kyrie Irving did issue an apology late Thursday night, late, late night, um, after the Nets suspended him. And uh, he said in, in part, it was it was pretty it was pretty lengthy apology. Um, he said in part to all Jewish families and communities that are hurt and affected from my post. I am deeply sorry to have caused you pain. I apologize. It's unclear if that apology will suffice. Uh, it was an apology. Or if, and, and this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that he they go, they're going to make him, uh, uh, <laughs> I think that they're going to make him come out and say it. Like, he, like, you know, somebody wrote that down for him and he posted it to social media. I think, that they're going to require that he says these words on a video and we actually have to see and hear it. See and hear it. Now, understand this. All he did was promote something, uh, uh, share a link to something that was already out. He didn't make the video. <laughs> He's not on the video uh, they're doing a whole lot, and and there has been a whole lot of pressure now for uh, Amazon to to feel some of this blowback. But um, you know, I don't, I don't know. I just, I, I think that things have things have gone to a point where we are way, way too sensitive about stuff. We are way too sensitive about stuff. Kyrie Irving sharing a video and a book that sold on Amazon should not cause all of this confusion. But here, here we are. Here we are. Uh, so he's already apologized on social media. Now, here's the thing. He did the offense on social media. He shared it. And he put his apology on social media. I think that should be good. But uh, sadly, as is the, um, uh, uh, the routine, sadly, as is the routine, uh, they want to. They want to break. They want to break people. Break them down. Now, now the money is not going to break him. Uh, I think that if they try to get him to come out and talk verbally, uh, I look at that as um, I don't know. I, I, he's not the most articulate person, so I, I, I don't know how well this is going to go over. Uh, but here's my: if if I was a betting man, which I am not, but if I was a betting man, I'm going to say. Kyrie Irving is going to make a video and he's going to apologize. That's what I, I say. He's going to do that. I, I, that's what I think he's going to do. That's what I think he's going to do. And uh, I don't think that uh, uh, that they're going to say that your uh, his post on social media, which he did apologize. He did apologize. Now, if he gets a good attorney or he got some smart friends, maybe he can he can figure this out. But um, uh, Barnabas says a big farmer wants him taken out. You're talking about for his his uh his views on COVID-19 and his views on uh vaccines and 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 whatnot. I don't know. So Wayne Omega says wrong. Are you saying that I'm wrong? Are you saying that Kyrie is not going to apologize? I mean, well, he's already apologized. Are you saying uh Wayne Omega, are you saying that Kyrie is not going to get on a video and apologize? Is that what you're saying? Uh, I like to know what would you feel about that? Uh, Kyrie uh, will begin his five game suspension on when the Nets take on the Wizards. Should the uh, punishment wind up being only five games, he will be eligible to return 
to the court on November the 13th when the Nets face the Lakers in uh, L.A. So if uh, if that is the case, correct. So Wayne Omega says correct. All right, so Wayne Omega is saying that Kyrie is not going to apologize on video. So you think that the only apology he's doing is the one that he that he posted already, and if they want anything else, then they like, nah, that, I'm good. All right, and and so uh, I guess technically, if he does that, if he if he says, look, I already apologized, I ain't doing nothing else. Uh, I mean, I guess per what they laid out, that would be uh, that would be enough, I, I would say. But are they going to accept that? I don't know. I mean, it, you know, because. Because here's here's why I say that. Here's why here's why I say I don't know if I think they're going to try to push for more because he's already apologized, right? He already apologized, but they put he already condemned condemned the film as well in the apology. So for the fact that they put apologize and condemned the film that he promoted when he already did that, I think that they're going to want it further. I, I think they're going to try to, you know what I mean? They're going to try to make an example out of him. A lot of backlash given to uh, LeBron James and other uh, NBA players. They're saying that they have not been supportive of Kyrie. A lot of support for Kyrie online. A lot of, um, a lot of backlash for Kyrie as well. Uh, different folks feel different ways. Different people feel di- feel different ways. So uh, five-game suspension begins on Friday against the Wizards. Yeah, I got, they need him back for the Lakers. The Lakers have been playing like crap. <laughs> the Lakers have been playing like crap. Uh, 410 Main, my man Jermaine says that the real gatekeepers are pressing them. Yeah, because here's, here's the thing. The Nets did not want to do this, okay? Understand this. They didn't want to do it. Right, they didn't want to do it. They are buckling to the pressure. They are uh, buckling to the pressure. I mean, the Nets, the nonstop drama has uh, has has really been overshadowing Kevin Durant's uh, start to the uh, 2022-23 NBA season. Durant has scored the most points in the league so far this season. We don't even get to talk about that. Saying that different people feel different ways about racism, too, I guess. Yes, yes. You're absolutely right. Different people feel different ways. Some white people feel that, or, or try to say, that real racism is racism against them. Some black people say that they can't be racist. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? It's just... Uh, Let's not cancel racist people either then. Um, I don't think that anybody should be, you know, canceled per se, right? Uh, what does cancel even mean? I, I don't even know what it means anymore. Uh, it, it means that you get your, you know, you got to take your licks in public and then everything is okay. Does it mean that you never get to talk anymore? Like, what is it? Does it mean you can't make money no more? I mean, everybody can make mistakes. You know, you can do something and say, okay, yeah, I did that before. I wish I, if I could do that over, I probably wouldn't did it like that, right? You can, I mean, all throughout life, we got different things that we've done different ways. I'm just saying that, um, you know, if somebody says something that offends somebody and say, look, my bad, okay, let's move on. That's how I, I look at it. And I, I don't think that the canceling, I just, I, I hate that whole, that whole movement and the way that it, that, that it's, it's done. You know what I mean? Blackball. Yeah. Cancel this blackball. Jermaine said that. 410 Main on Instagram. Cancel this being blackballed. You're right. You're right. And and it's um it's it, it's really unfortunate. It's really unfortunate. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, what else? Okay, so it's saying really that okay, what is it saying? Uh the real is that people are canceling people over racism. Why shouldn't they be canceled over anti-Semitism? Uh, you know, I suppose I, I thought that anti, uh, you know, anti-Semitism uh, was was racism. If that's not racism. Like what? Well, I, I don't know. I, all all very um, 
because of social media, everybody can put their views out there, say what they think. And I think that we need to communicate more. You do need to know, look, this offends me when you say that, or I don't like when you say this. And we need to talk about these things. And I feel that we should talk about these things. So why shouldn't he be canceled? What, what is this canceled? So you're saying uh, he should, he should, Kyrie should be canceled forever. He should be blackballed and using Jermaine's words, Kyrie Irving should be blackballed forever and should never be allowed to make any money because he shared this video and book link that sold on Amazon. Is that what you're saying? He should never be allowed to do anything. There's no coming back from that. He should just go away somewhere. Is that what you're saying? No. On Instagram, they talk, they, they talking crazy. They're talking crazy. No, that, that man should not be um gone forever because of that. No, that's that's too far. That's too far. Uh, you know, if he hurt some people's feelings, he say, Look, my bad, I hurt your feelings. I ain't mean to hurt your feelings. All right, cool, you know, whatever, right? And then you move on, right? You ain't never been with your homeboys and y'all said something in out of anger. Right, out of anger, you had a big argument, and you said some out of anger, and after anger, after the argument, you're like, "Yo, you said such and such, yo, I ain't like that." And you're like, "Yo, well, you said this, this, and this, and I ain't like that." Yo, my bad, my bad, and that's and we keep it moving, and we good. You know what I mean? You keep moving, and you be good, right? And so just because, and, and so here, this is a big difference between uh, I think black culture and Jewish culture. Jewish Jewish culture. Some of the things that offend them are not always that, uh, uh, not always that clear. And I, and I think it's like this with gay people as well. Sometimes it's just not clear what is offensive. And so you can say something and not mean to be offensive and then somebody take offense to it. And some people are like, look, that's what I said. I didn't mean it to be, I didn't mean it to be offensive or I didn't mean you to be offended by it or, you know, Whatever, and, and, and that's how it gets. Intention versus uh, reality gets confused. Intention versus reality. Says that the problem is, is he is standing in doubling down with his anti -sem. Listen, I think initially Kyrie did that. Initially because he didn't intend, Kyrie did not intend to offend. But then once he realized that he was offending folks, then he said, okay, look, I'm sorry. Like he said, he said he was sorry. So yeah, initially he doubled down, but he has since apologized. He has since uh, condemned anti-Semitism. He has condemned hate. He has condemned uh, the things that were uh, expressed in the movie and the book that, um, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, that would be crazy. He, he has expressed those things. So it's, it's just like, you got to pay attention. Like once, and he, this happens frequently, you get locked in. He said that, and then you don't go past that. I'm saying initially he doubled down. He has since apologized. That was his first reaction. His first reaction was the double down. And then after that, he has uh, has said something else, but I I believe that a couple apologies, you want to you want to sit him down with some people to say you know some some anti defamation league, he wants to give some money to some charities. I think that all those things are okay. I think I think that that's sufficient. I don't think that this man should be blackballed for the rest of his life because he tweeted something that uh, that that hurt the Jewish community. I think that that's too far. I think that's too far. And I think, here's the other thing. I think that people, uh, because, you know, people have to be free to say things and then face consequences, right? I think that people are free to say whatever they want to say. However, there are consequences and repercussions to everything. But the consequences and repercussions for everything should not just be straight blackballed. We're talking about Kyrie Irving. We're talking about Kyrie Irving. I think that an apology and him giving to some charity and sitting down with the ADL is fine. Is fine. How about the person who made the documentary? Oh, yeah. See, 
see, uh, Maine, here's the thing. The documentary um, or the book, I believe, came out in 2014, right? Book came out in 2014. But here's the thing. The book, that person's not famous, right? And, and, and so they want to go after a famous person because they think that a famous person has more followers and, and can get the message heard by more people. Me personally, I think that it is good to have these conversations. Many people had never heard of the book before. Kyrie shared it and there was outrage about it. Because after Kyrie shared it, I still I didn't I hadn't seen the, the tweet. I only became aware of it after the backlash happened. And so what's what's interesting is that what people were trying to avoid which was amplifying this video and amplifying this book that only happened when the backlash came because most people weren't aware of what it was, but it was like uh, Kyrie did this and then the backlash came and it happened right at the same time. Um, it happened right at the same time that the Kanye West thing, but let's understand this is not a new book. This book has been out and then it was a documentary after that straight from Hitler's handbook. This is not from Hitler's handbook. There was no social media when Hitler was around. That, the, the, the methods that Hitler used were totally different. It's just like, it's not even the same thing. I just, ah, oh, so frustrating. Um, What is it with white people don't like to hear the truth? What truth are you referring to that you said that, that white people don't like to hear? I think people in general don't like to hear the truth, but what what uh, specific truth are you talking about? The message of the documentary. So the message, I have not seen the documentary, okay? Um, nor have I read the book. And um, I don't think that Kyrie Irving is anybody who I would take book recommendations from anyway, okay? Uh, he's a ball player. And, uh, you know, if he wants to help me with my jump shot, yeah, that's who I would go to. But for book recommendations or documentary uh, recommendations, I would not go to Kyrie Irving or, uh, or you know, look at anything that he says like that. I mean, because I disagree with him on, on the, the flat earth. He's one of the flat earthers. I disagree with Kyrie Irving on that and, and, and a whole a lot of other things. I don't even agree with his, you know, decisions with regards to teams. You know what I mean? So, you know, I don't, I've never read the book. Um Okay, so there you go. Uh, he's on claiming this is what? Look, I don't, I can't control what people say. And so, uh, what I don't know what truth we're talking about. So, Instagram, like these, these, uh, these gentlemen are saying a couple of uh, conflicting things. And so, it seems like, uh, see, he, qu see, he quickly, what? I don't even know what you're saying exactly. Okay, uh, it seems that you have much more. Uh, I don't know. Okay, you know how your uh your comments they're moving fast. I'm, I'm trying to read some comments from um from Instagram. Uh, but but again, we're talking about Kyrie Irving. I personally would not take any book recommendations from Kyrie Irving. I've I've heard different things that Kyrie Irving said. Not the sharpest knife in the drawer. Uh, me myself, but I think that he's a good ball player. He is, and um, you know, it, he he he's a good ball player. Uh, but uh, let me see. They don't like black people that tell the truth. Otherwise, if it was me, uh, then why punish him? Okay, I get what you're saying, and so you know, I think everybody's interpretation, um, everybody's interpretation of um, offense or, or things to take offense. So, talk about the uh, the Washington Redskins. You remember in Edmondson here in Baltimore. My high school's football team was called the Redskins, right? And so, you know, you have Washington Redskins, and, and we were at Edmondson Redskins. Now, uh, most of the people that went to our school, I say that Edmondson, when I went there, was probably 80% black, right? Uh, there were white, there were, there were, there were no Native Americans, no indigenous people there. And I don't know any. Native Americans, personally, right? And so we hear people talk about, you know, they wanted to, to change the name from the Redskins. And that, uh, some people said that it's not offensive. 
the Redskins, that name is not offensive. And these are people speaking about it, that one, that the stereotype is not directed to. And so when you have people, you have black people or white people talking about what is offensive to Native Americans, it's kind of hard for you to get that grasp because it doesn't apply to you. You know what I mean? And so I've grown up with obviously the Washington Redskins being, uh, you know, uh, here in Maryland as well. And it just became normal for me to hear it. It didn't seem offensive. And when the whole backlash came about they need to change the name because people wanted them to change the name, uh, I like the name of my high school's team. And I, while I don't like the Redskin team, it's not my team, I didn't see a problem with it. And it was actually my one of my sisters that she was like, she's completely offended by, you know, some of the uh, – the sports teams that use Native American, um, you know, imagery names, uh, and she is totally like. So we had this big conversation slash argument about why it was offensive, right? And I hadn't even looked at it. I hadn't even looked at it from that perspective. I wasn't trying to offend Native Americans, uh, you know, by supporting my high school football team. I wasn't trying to uh, uh, offend anybody by that. I didn't think it was offensive. And so so me sharing things that had the Edmondson Redskin logo on it or, or talking about it, that could have been deemed offensive to some people. And if I had shared something that had that name on there or the logo, or I, share, I shared something from, from Edmondson uh, Redskins, and, and some Native Americans said, this is offensive. You need to apologize. And I'm like, what are you talking about, right? I would have doubled down. I would have said, no, I'm not offending nobody. I'm not, this is a team. You know what I mean? This is, you know, and, and so um, it's very easy for you to get both sides of this. I can understand how someone can inadvertently offend someone, not intend to, but still offend people and double down. Thanksgiving is offensive to them. I did not know that. I did not know that. So, so, uh, uh, Jermaine, so you saying that just the, the holiday is that whole thing is the, uh, the imagery of, um, pilgrims and, and, uh, and native Americans. Wow. I didn't even think about it like that. Uh, yeah. Damn it. Yeah. So it is, it's, it's, this country has a lot of customs and other countries as well. But this is the country that we know, right? Because this is where we live, uh, that are offensive. And so a lot of times things have to change. And, and in order for things to change, we have to have conversations. And we have to have conversations and be able to hear each other out. Have to hear both sides of an argument. Not just one side, not just the other side. But we need to, these things need to be brought to the light. These things need to be brought to the light and everybody doesn't need to be silenced. We need to have these conversations. We need to have these conversations so that we can be better to each other. Jermaine says that, yeah, they slaughtered them and took their land. That is true. That's true. That ultimately is what happened. It's ultimately what happened, you know, um, and so, you know, a lot of times how things start, though, is not the way that they end ended. And, you know, I don't even know that we even talk about the pilgrims and uh, and Native Americans like that anymore. When you think about Thanksgiving, when I think about Thanksgiving now, I'm just thinking about getting together with my family and fellowship and football and eating, you know, talking smack. <laughs> and, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, but uh, you but you're absolutely right. The the way that the custom was brought to us is definitely not cool. Definitely not cool. Um, and, and so what I like situations to be, uh, of course you got to look at, you know, things individually. Uh, but generally speaking, if somebody shares a post that I don't like, or somebody says something that I don't like, I don't think that they should be blackballed for life. Uh, no way for you to make money anymore. You are done. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, you're right. You're right. I um 
I, I definitely. But going back to what I was saying about the Redskins, I wasn't trying to offend offend people with that. You know what I mean? And, and so, and if there's some other things that we need to tighten up as a society, then we need to tighten them up. And there's nothing wrong with that. And to me, a lot of times people are resistant to change. They're like, okay, we used to say this. Now we don't say this no more. People are too sensitive. And, and, and people are sensitive about some things. And some things are people being too sensitive. And some things need to change, right? Both things can be true at the same time. Sometimes people need to ease up. Sometimes people need, need to be more open to listen. Both things can be true at the same time. All right. Definitely let me get your thoughts in the comment section. Of course, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, at the Diamond K Show. Of course, I am here weekdays giving you my take on the top news stories of the day. I'll be back here tomorrow, 6 p.m. And then, of course, 7 p.m., the His and Her Show. And 9 p.m., the election night special, 9 to 11, right here on fire-tv.com, on fire-tv.com. Thank you, everybody. Of course, anywhere you get your podcast, just search The Diamond K Show and uh, check us out there. And uh, on YouTube, of course, DJ Diamond K. And uh, definitely check out my music Anywhere you get uh, you get your songs from Apple, Spotify, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but I will be back here tomorrow. A lot of things going on. Tomorrow's election night special, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. on fire-tv.com. You listen to the Diamond K Show. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Today's broadcast was brought to you in part by City View Bar and Grill. City View is a family-friendly, casual dining bar and restaurant, providing high-quality food and good old-fashioned friendly service. At City View Bar and Grill, you can live every hour like it's happy hour. The food is mouth-watering, the atmosphere is fun, energetic, and mature. Located at 6700 Security Boulevard in Gwyn Oak, Maryland, a.k.a. Woodlawn, it is the City View Bar and Grill. Stop in today or visit cityviewmd.com. That's cityviewmd.com. The 2022 Baltimore Crown Awards goes down Saturday, November the 19th at The Garage, 6 Lafayette Avenue in Baltimore. This year's celebration is an emerald party. There is a dress code, it's emerald green, and that is to celebrate the 16-year anniversary of the Baltimore scene movement. Please come dressed in the theme and the color for a visual unity that reflects the theme for the evening. It's hosted by comedian Desi Alexander. You can cast your votes right now. Visit thebaltimorescene.org. We'll see you Saturday, November the 19th, 2022 for the Baltimore Crown Award.